In today's two readings, we get to talk about spirits. And even though it's not Halloween yet, even though CBS seems to think it might be soon, uh, I want to talk today a little bit about spirits and about exorcisms and about all these things that seem, for some of us at least, to be outside of the normal for our Christian discipleship, for our life together. Um, so in the first reading we have from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, uh, we have him talking about living in the Spirit of God. He writes about, we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. That indwelling Spirit of God that we think of as one of the great gifts of our baptism, great gifts of our confirmation. And then in the Gospel of Luke, we hear a story about Jesus' first exorcism. Um, now, now we in the, the Trinity Georgetown community like to think we know a lot about exorcism because we bring our friends to look at the stairs when they come to visit town. But here in this story, we see this first instance where people bring to Jesus in the synagogue a, a man who has been uh, taken by the spirit of an unclean demon. Uh, and, and the demon knows who Jesus is before anyone else does, which is interesting. And Jesus says, be quiet, come out of him. And the demon comes out of this man and lets him to go back to a normal, peaceful life. So, so what do we do with that? I, I must confess, when we start talking about demons, we start talking about evil spirits, we start talking about the spirit of the world, I'm a little torn here. On one level, my first instinct, as, as somebody who's uh, taken lots of courses in modern science, who wants to think about... Uh, behind the text of what kind of experience are these people having, um, who likes to think of myself as a good post-enlightenment person who's pretty suspicious of talk about spirits and demons and, and, and supernatural beings being all around us. And yet the older I get, the more I'm a little cautious about saying that these things don't exist. The more I am a little bit, um, I think I know less than I probably think I know. Uh, and part of that is just the long tradition of the church, um, which, starting with Jesus' time, has said that evil forces and good forces of a spiritual nature are a real part of our world. Part of it is the experience of the fact that lots of cultures uh, here in the United States, here in our parish, here throughout the world, and also through most, the vast majority of Christian history, have seen the reality of spiritual forces of good and evil as part of what Christianity is part of the world we inhabit. And, uh, and another thing that makes me think more and more these days about, well, how do we think about these evil spirits? We, we see in our world so much conflict, so much violence, so much irrational evil, that it makes me wonder, well, there's something about the objectivity of evil, the reality of evil, the persistence of what St. Paul calls the powers and the principalities that makes me begin to wonder how we brushed aside this language of good spirits and evil spirits um, a little too quickly in the last few hundred years. What do we do with this today? Well, a starting point, whether we want to talk about evil spirits as a metaphor, or evil spirits as a reality, is to think about how do we discern good and evil spirits in our own lives? How do we figure out when it's the spirit of God whispering into our, our lives as a breath to be our best selves, and how do we know what comes from what the Ignatian tradition calls the bad spirit, this Ignatian discernment of spirits. We've heard a lot about this in our last Ignatian year, it's just coming to a close, of figuring out how do we tell at our deepest level, in our deepest, what some people call the, our wisest mind, what would be good and what would be bad, what would lead to life, what would lead to death what would lead to greater God of love of God and neighbor, and what leads to less love of God and neighbor. So Ignatius tells us a bit about how to think about this, how to see where God is calling us to take those movements of the Spirit, the Spirit of God, seriously. And, and a good clue that you're on to something that comes from um, the Spirit of God rather than the Spirit of the world or rather than your worst impulses is to think about what comes from those results. What's the, what's the result? And some of you of a certain age will remember having to memorize the fruits of the Holy Spirit uh, from the Baltimore Catechism. But for those of us who maybe are a little younger, we can still go back to St. Paul's letter to the Galatians where he talks about the fruit of the Spirit as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
If we think of that that way, we can start discerning the good spirits in our lives, the good spirits in our day-to-day -day work with each other, our day-to-day -day lives with our families, our day-to-day -day lives especially with those who are most marginalized and who are most called to bring some of that peace, joy, and love. As opposed to the spirit that wants to close in, the spirit that wants to be a little more selfish, the spirit that wants to, out of fear or out of doubt, hold back, the spirit that says that's somebody else's problem. And the, the great good news of today's gospel is to remember that in those moments of decision, of discernment, we always fall short, that's part of who we are, but remembering that one, we have been blessed with the Spirit of God, as Paul says, that we have been enlightened to not live according to the spirits of this world and their smaller vision, their more um, stingy vision of what love should look like. And from our gospel we learn Jesus is in charge of this. Jesus has authority over these spirits. So we might pray today to ask Jesus to uh, continue to exercise all of the bad spirits of our world and of our individual lives to keep making room in our souls, room in our bodies, room in our breath for the breath of God, the Spirit of God that wants to breathe in and then breathe out through us to slowly, slowly, and yet constantly continue healing our world.